Welcome to the schematic brush tutorial, at least the first one. I hope that this one is really helpful for people, and this is going to be a long one, so I hope you're strapped in, and I hope you're ready to learn. Here we go. All right, to get into things and just to start things out, I want to just give a little a couple of caveats that I'm I'm doing. So whenever I'm clicking, I'm using power tools to do post one and post two here. And all that takes is slash PT and then OS one while you're holding the tool that you want to put it on or bind it to, and then post two for the other tool. And that's all I'm doing. That just makes my selections easier and faster. Anyway, on to the next part, which is actually important for the schematic brush, making schematics. So for that, all I'm going to do here, and I have these pre set trees for myself. We're going to go ahead and just make the schematics first and then I'll get into the schematic brush just so you know how to make schematics. And to do that, we go ahead, we want to make this as tight as possible for schematic brush and I'll get into why we do that later, but go ahead and try to make it so that you're right on the edges of the your build and you select it. So post one, oops, up, try that again and post two. And then we go ahead and copy. It doesn't matter where you copy it from for schematic brush. When we name a schematic, we want to use an underscore after it. So I'm going to just use name and an underscore, literally one. Whenever you do an underscore, you got to put a number after it. Doesn't matter. You can start with zero actually, but for my sake, I like just starting with one. And doesn't actually matter what number you put behind it. But I do recommend putting a underscore and then one because that creates a way to randomly rotate between the similar schematics within Schematic Brush because when you're using the schematic brush, you can put a star and that'll basically randomly rotate between, well, when we're going to make another schematic here for this second tree, it'll randomly rotate between the two different trees that we're about to make. So if we copy this, make a schematic for it, whoops. Oh, I don't think I actually named the other one. I didn't, I don't think I actually saved it. So let's call this one one and let's call this one two. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do one more so that we have three, cause I always like to have three. And I wanna show you some cool stuff we can do. So go ahead and make sure we copy that first and then three. All right, now that we have our three tree schematics, we can go ahead and get into the nitty gritty and the juicy part of the schematic brush. I am gonna go ahead, um, I will leave a link to this whole document in my description below. So if you wanna check that out, go down below, that'll be there. And this is basically my own making of a schematic brush commands wiki because I personally think that the current schematic brush wiki is not very good. When we are making a schematic brush command, this is going to be our main go-to thing here. But for me, I like to use, well, the, the secondary command there's an alternative alternative way to type the command. There's two different ways. So there's this first one, and then there's this one. And I like to use the second one, even though it might seem a little more complicated. I promise it's worth it in the end to not try and do all this stuff with this. And let me show you why. When we are making the schematic brush command, we go SCHBR, right? And let's go ahead and type in our name, underscore, and it's going to get really complicated really quickly here, so I want to try to keep it simple to start with. Again, if you want to rotate through the different schematics you made, so for me it's just one, two, and three, uh, there could be an infinite number of schematics that you've made with underscore number. That If you want to randomly rotate through them, you can do a star. And if you want to randomly flip through those random schematics that you're going to paste, you will put an exclamation point. And if you want to specify what flip you're going to do, you would just say, you know, north, north, south, west, and west, east. But for me, we're going to go ahead and random flip because it's a tree. You want it to be random. And then the at is rotation. So again, it's just random is a star. And if you don't want it to be random, you can type 180, 270, or 90. And for us, we're going to randomly rotate it as well as flip it because that basically gives us another four schematics or so, probably more than that, for each of the one schematic that we made. So 
This next one is not really important if you're going to be randomly rotating through the different numbers that you have because this is the weight. So I'll get into this in just a minute because I don't want to go too deep into weight because that's not as important. Though I do want to say, if you want, you can also do this and you can do one comma two if you put brackets and that way it'll just do one and two. So that way you're just randomly rotating between the first and the second schematic. And if you want, you could do, you know, obviously three, four, five, whatever, if you have more. Or you could even do one comma three. You don't even have to do a very specified one. As you can see, I'm randomly rotating between those two with random clips and stuff. So let's go ahead and undo those. And then we'll get into the fun stuff. After this, after you've done all that, you can also add in some modifiers. This is where we get into all this stuff. Basically, we have replace all, place bottom. Oh, I think I forgot a little bracket there on my document. There we go. <laughs> Live fixing. And then a few different other things. Let's go ahead and start with minus place bottom because that's the one that means the most to me. Um, and then there are actually a few different parameters that we can put on this. So we got bottom, drop, middle, original, raise, and top. Original, for mine, it doesn't actually work, but it's supposed to basically paste it based off where you copied it from. So if you're not paying attention to where you copied it from, it's going to paste it real weird and probably not correctly. But for me, it doesn't actually work. Um, for my version, I have 1.4.5, just so you know. Original doesn't work. The ones that do work are bottom, middle, and top for me. Basically, those are the ones you're going to want to pay attention to anyway, because those are the most important ones. Basically, if you want to play, the default is bottom, and that'll just paste from the bottom of your selection. So I selected the trees at the bottom point was down at the roots down here, and it'll place it at the bottom. And then the non-default ones would be middle. You paste it in the middle, and top. And that'll just basically not paste anything because we won't see it because it pasted it at the very top of our selection. All right, and moving on to the next modifier, let's go ahead and keep bottom in there. If we go ahead and do minus replace all. Default, minus replace all is not on. As you can see, for all of these other ones that I've been pasting, the tree is not going into the ground. And even this one, it doesn't replace the grass in the ground. But if I turn on minus replace all, as you can see, it just replaced the grass in the ground there. But basically, that's what it does. It's still technically, it's like you were pasting it as if you were using regular world edit and just pasting in anything into another thing. Always the things you are pasting are going to take priority and basically minus replace all, make sure that that happens. And the next one is going to be minus Y offset. So you can also do Y off. You don't have to do Y offset. Um, and this can be a positive or a negative number. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and do a negative. Let's do, whoop, I need to get onto my tool here. Sorry. Um, no. Let's do minus Y off negative. Or you can also do minus Y, sorry. Uh, negative and let's do, let's just do three or four. And then, yeah, you can see as we paste them in, they're going to paste further into the ground. And because we have replace all, it's going to essentially give us roots in the ground. And that's really useful for when you're pasting trees into the ground and need roots to be in the ground. And our last one is minus include air. This is going to actually include air. So whenever you do a minus something, it actually includes it. It's not excluding it. So this should, as, yeah, as we can see now, when I paste it, it plops it down and includes the air that I selected. And if I were to keep doing that, obviously this is a more destructive way to paste things. But you can do that if you need to. So now let's get into the even more nitty gritty and complicated stuff of Schematic Brush. Basically, you can put multiple sections of these within one command. Let's say I wanted to do the same thing or a different thing with just the second schematic that we created because we're just using one and three with these parameters, the random rotation and flipping. And then let's say we want two to randomly rotate. Let's say we don't want it to rotate. We always want it to go on 90 degrees and we always want this one to go north uh, flip. We can do that. And then we only want it to paste, let's say 70% mm, of the time. 
And with this one, we want it to paste, I don't know, 90% uh, of the time. Let's do 70, 30, so that it makes more sense. So it actually equals 100. There we go. Now this, the weight, that's what this is. Technically, you can do random still. So you can put a star and it would be random. It would randomly flip through one and three or randomly flip through two. In this case, I only want two to pay 30% of the time and I only want one and three to pay 70% of the time. And that is how you would use a weight within a schematic brush. And you can get really complicated and you can start adding in different numbers and stuff. But for me, let's go ahead and enter that. And we can see, oh, whoops, I'm gonna get rid of the include error, sorry. There we go. We can see it'll just randomly rotate through those. And it should technically be pasting the smallest one, so the third one that we made the least often. Because we did, yeah, 30% there. Let's do, let's do it even less. Let's do like 1%. And 99%. And see if how often it actually pastes it. I know that was a lot, and I know this is a long command, and I will go ahead, I will copy this, the final command that we've made, and I'm gonna go ahead and put this right here. And I'm just gonna leave it. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna highlight this, I'm gonna make it a little darker than the rest, just so that you know it's the tutorial command and there you go you will have access to that with the link to this document down below if this tutorial was helpful for you guys i'm sure you know how the buttons work down there by now i know one of them's broken i hope we can get it back but you're welcome to click it anyway <laughs> thank you all for watching widow out